So I guess you can tell what we're going to be talking about in this little um, video. This is actually going to be kind of a short video because we're going to be covering some, uh, you know, just just uh, shorter topics. But uh, rhabdomyolysis, rhabdomyolysis. So what in the world is rhabdomyolysis? So the answer to that is actually um, the, uh, the it's, it's skeletal muscle breakdown. It's the breakdown and the damage and the, the deterioration of the skeletal muscle, not because, uh, you know, um, I, I got older or, like Bill, I don't work out, you know. Um, no, not because of that, but because of uh, mostly, what we're going to probably see it in the most, is going to be in crush injuries, okay? In crush injuries. Now, this can happen in other ways as well. It's not just crush injuries. It can be certain meds, certain drugs that can cause rhabdomyolysis, or excuse me, rhabdomyolysis, um, and uh, even strenuous exercise. So I had a student once that actually wound up uh, having rhabdomyolysis um, because he was, uh, you know, he, he got involved in that, uh, that firefighter walk-up challenge, I think they call it, and you walk up 40 floors, fully packed out, and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, uh, you know, he did it. I mean, he basically, uh, you know, and he really worked out hard and he ran up those floors and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, he's a relatively young guy in, in good health. And um, uh, he actually developed rhabdomyolysis because uh, he didn't prepare for it. He didn't prepare. He didn't really, you know, go and make sure that he was working out well and getting ready for it. Um, no, he just went and did this and uh, wound up developing rhabdomyolysis and actually wound up in the hospital for about three weeks. Uh, lots of fluids, um, lots, of, uh, lots of medications to try to get this all under control and uh, to get his body back into uh, a, a state of homeostasis. So, um, so what are some of the signs and symptoms of rhabdomyolysis? Well, obviously, uh, you're going to have some muscle pain. Right? You're going to have muscle pain, you're going to have weakness, uh, probably muscle tremors to go along with that. And then uh, you're going to have a thing called tea-colored urine. And tea-colored urine is just like it sounds. It is urine that is the color of almost like an iced tea. Uh, well, that makes the peach tea that I'm sitting here drinking a little grosser. Okay, so never mind. Uh, anyway, so uh, one of the things that you'll notice with these patients is that they uh, they kind of almost produce they they almost present like a patient in an acidosis. Okay, so they're probably going to have a high heart rate, going to have a high respiratory rate. They're going to be trying to blow off some of this this acid um, because actually what happens is, um, and I shouldn't say just the acid, but what happens is they actually become um, hyperkalemic. Um, they, they wind up having um, high uh, potassium levels in the blood and uh, they, they, they develop hyperkalemia. Um, you know, obviously some of the complications that could go along with crush injuries themselves is that we could be talking about something like a compartment syndrome or something like that. And if you remember the other day when I was talking about compartment syndrome, I, I, I drew sort of a cross-section of, a, uh, uh, of an arm or a leg, what, what, whatever you want to say. And the way that I used to, to, to talk about crush is I used to say, you know, um, as the pressure goes outward, and not just crush, I'm sorry, compartment syndrome, as the pressure starts to go outward, um, the, the skin reaches a stretching point where eventually pressure starts to come inward because there's no more pressure that can can be relieved by stretch of skin so you actually start to get this this pressure inward well this drawing is really rudimentary yeah big surprise for me right what would actually be a little bit better drawing and what I drew on the board was something a little bit more like this the bone in the middle there and then separate compartments you know and these compartments do not always have to be fully connected to the bone area. Um, we could be talking about just certain portions of the body, and we could, or uh, you know, uh, again, uh, well, you have um, you know different muscles in here, and so these compartments 
could be inflamed. Um, and these compartments, as they start swelling and swelling and swelling, they can create pressure then on those other compartments. And that's a little bit better drawing, I think, okay? Um, because you're, you're, you're causing more pressure, right? And, and that's really what's going on here. And so in that pressure, in the crush injury, in that pressure, what's happening is that you're getting uh, still cellular respiration still going on. Uh, you're decreasing the amount of oxygen that's getting to that tissue, but you're not changing, um, well, in, in a way you are, uh, changing some of the carbon dioxide coming out of it, but you actually uh, convert over to an anaerobic metabolism. And so there's a massive buildup of lactic acid. So you get this buildup of lactic acid in those tissues, okay? And uh, this can happen like, for instance, in a crush injury. You know, maybe something like this, right? So um, imagine that, that, you know, this patient has suffered some sort of uh, crush injury to the hand. So obviously we have, uh, as it says, you know, a disruption in, in, the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the blood flow. We have a disruption in the vasculature leading to the hand. And so in the, in the areas down here, where that blood flow is is um, um, is interrupted. Okay, uh, we've gone. We, we've those cells have converted over to more of an anaerobic metabolism, and so lactic acid is building up inside that 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 area. Okay, so let's say for example this area is crushed, and I then relieve the crush. Right. So I, I take whatever is on there, I take it off. What's going to happen to the lactic acid that's in those tissues? And the answer is, you know, it's going to go down the hand, down the arm, um, and it's going to flood into the body. Now, if we're talking about maybe just a hand, we might not be talking about enough lactic acid to create a situation where um, we have, we have a, 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 a systemic acidosis, okay? We may not. We may only stay with that acidosis in that particular area, and then we still do have a concern in the future, potentially, for rhabdomyolysis, okay? So this area, this area that I had circled there, all right, and I'll actually, you know, draw over here, but this area here would obviously be, be prone for rhabdomyolysis, and we could talk about and potentially have systemic breakdown of, of uh, skeletal muscle. So the biggest concern, though, here in this crush injury is that I'm going to have this flood of lactic acid. If I'm talking about a small area, then the flood of lactic acid might not be quite that bad. But if I'm talking about a larger area, if I'm talking about maybe a crush area that uh, encompasses the legs or the lower half of the body or something like that, then I could be talking about a crush injury um, that could actually cause my patient to develop a systemic acidosis, okay? Um, so systemic acidosis is the biggest problem here, or the biggest potential problem here once I relieve this crush injury. All right, so I need to be thinking, and I need to be thinking about the potential for using sodium bicarb. All right, sodium bicarb is a definite possibility here, but I'm not a big believer in the idea of pre treating with sodium bicarb. All right, I believe that um, having an IV established, having the sodium bicarb on hand, obviously going to be very important here. Uh, what I would want to do to a guy like this maybe is attach an entitled CO2. Get a baseline entitled CO2 reading while we're trying to relieve that crush, and then keep an eye on that entitled CO2. Watch for that entitled CO2 and make sure that it doesn't go up, uh, indicating that um, that that patient is 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 blowing off more acid and that they're becoming that 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 uh, they're becoming more metabolically or systemically acidotic, okay, or acidemic. I guess you would say that. So so sodium bicarb. Definitely worth checking out, definitely worth holding on to and having there. Uh, anybody know what your dosage might be? Yeah.
The answer is one milli equivalent per kilo. One milli equivalent per kilo. And yeah, I know. Actually, it should be like this. Big E. Anyway, one milli equivalent per kilo. So um, we have a, a tendency to underdose our sodium bicarb. A lot of times what I hear is, uh, give me an amp of sodium bicarb. Uh, no. No, definitely not. So uh, just, just looking at this sodium bicarb um, here, you can see and I'll use red actually, you can see that this is only 50 milli equivalents, okay? One milli equivalent per milliliter, so that tells you there are 50 milliliters in there, but it's only 50 milli equivalents. So if you're talking about a 50 kilo patient, sure, fine, one, uh, one amp is correct. But um, I'm going to say the vast majority of our patients, especially being up here in Wisconsin, you know, with cheese and beer, uh, are going to be a little bit more than 50 kilos. Just, just, just spitball in there. So... Uh, very good possibility, of course, that your, that your uh, patient is less than 50 kilos or that they're 50 kilos. But, you know, I really think we're talking about patients that are more than 50 kilos. So, obviously, you want to keep an eye on this patient. You want to monitor this patient. Don't be afraid to go ahead and give the sodium bicarb if you do think that that's a problem. What's going to wind up happening with this patient, they're going to really want to monitor their urine output and how their kidneys were then affected by that, um, uh, that crush injury, right, and by that, that release of lactic acid. And so they're going to keep a really good eye on that. They're going to make sure at the hospital uh, that they, they, they're drawing serum labs on this patient to just kind of watch over and make sure that uh, there's not too much acid coming out, or uh, excuse me, that, that there's uh, the right amount of electrolytes coming out um, and that they're not overflowing with acid still, okay? Uh, sodium bicarb is going to be a potential treatment here. The, kind of the, the nice thing about sodium bicarb, and what I meant by that is long-term treatment. You guys are like, yeah, you already told us that. No, long-term long -term treatment with sodium bicarb is going to be a very good possibility here. Uh, the benefit to it as well is that it can, uh, it can actually help to keep some of the... Uh, uh, the the hyperkalemia excuse yeah the hyperkalemia at bay um, they'll also be hypocalcemic and that's actually those those two things are going to kind of work uh, 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 oddly against each other and if you remember hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia and those kind of things when we talked about them back in cardiology uh, you you remember that um, that's not good right um, the more a patient is hyperkalemic the more the T wave starts to peak up. And the, the higher the chance is that that patient's going to go into a VTAC and eventually a VFib. Okay, um, these are patients that there is the possibility that they're going to, um, uh, you know, have some sort of an emergency dialysis. I think if it gets really, really bad, but, uh, but most of the time they're going to treat these patients um, in, the, uh, uh, in the hospital. This will be an inpatient treatment and it's going to take time. And... Um, you know, the outcomes can be pretty poor with this. So, you know, uh, not being afraid to go ahead and give the sodium bicarb if you really feel that it needs to be done, that's, that, that I, I definitely agree. Give it if you really feel that it needs to be done. You're the clinician. You make the decision. So if you feel that that patient needs sodium bicarb, you go ahead and do it. Um, I think that pretty much ends what I wanted to talk about in regards to uh, crush injury and rhabdomyolysis and the buildup of lactic acid. So uh, this was a nice short one, only about 14 minutes, and uh, we'll move on to the next one.